Hey everybody, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and this is a market radar. Market radar, few and far between. We've been so I've been so concentrated on the ES a lot, working on some uh, new strategies and stuff that I've I haven't been doing too many YouTube videos, and the market radar is one of those videos I usually put. But uh, I usually uh, do a midweek video for the members, so we're going to combine that here today uh, as a market radar and a kind of an update on some of the positions we're holding. So it is Wednesday, and we're you know looking at the uh, Looking at some things that are happening after hours, there's been a lot of earnings out here t tonight. Uh, just to refresh you, there's some good good news too. Actually, we're holding a stock, a new position. Um, we'll start off with that news. Hopefully, uh, that catches someone with a good in a good mood today here. And Taylor, which we started our position. Um, Uh, today and I'm just I'm trying to get my uh, price up. I'm bringing up my platform here. We're in at uh, 37.56. 37.56. Um, if we take a look at it after hours here, buyout, uh, buyout rumors and chatter, and actually uh, some news out about a buyout coming out. So it's trading up here close to 40, in between 40 and 42 right now. So we're gonna have a nice little bounce on this. And this was a, a divergence setup. And let's just start talk talk about the divergence. Divergence is the go-to. Uh, you know, set up for us here at Day Training Radio. It really is an important setup. I try to kind of even pay back people who bring me divergences to. If you bring me a good divergence and I take that trade, I'll give you 30% of the profits. But the divergence is a special one. It's called the lane divergence, and we see the momentum here shift as we make new lows, but the stochastics refuse to make new lows. In this case, you can see it both on the 14 period and the 7 period. And uh, it just, it is working out great. And today, again, after hours, we've had some news here. Uh, and surging 15% after hours following routers report that Golden Gate Capital may acquire a company. Price talk is in the low 40 range. Tomorrow morning, I'll be in here early taking profits, hopefully get a little further upside. But I would not, if you know, if it's trading in the low 40s right now, uh, I'm out of it. I mean, I just looked at the account right now. It's, you know, I have 70 shares. I'm about uh, up about $200, so I don't have much on it. But that's a great little, uh, you know, it's perfect. It doesn't mean any much about the divergence anymore. But uh, we'll take it. And that's just an update for you. So you can get in early and maybe uh, take that off pre-market before get, the people have the opportunity to sell off into it. So next up here, we're going to take a look at the SPX. And that's part of the market radar. And the last couple of days, we've been seeing some selling. Yesterday, we came into this market oversold on the 60. And I was looking for a... Uh, a reversal candle and we had one uh, early this morning it was perfect we actually got a trade off of Apple on it it was a great trade uh, you know we'll talk more about that in a second but we failed to make a follow through hot you know follow through candle and that concerned me because if we look back at the 60 minute time frame um, each one of these 60 minute time frames gave us a good reversal but we had a follow through candle this is the only one we didn't have a follow through candle and we broke down further now we open up tomorrow uh, after today's uh, last, you know, last hour, I had a beautiful candle in the last hour, but wasn't taking out the lows. You might want to stretch it and call it an engulfing pattern, but I'm not pulling out the protractor. It doesn't look 100% um, as an engulfing. So we'll watch it tomorrow. The, th the good thing is that 60 is, is set up here. The bad thing is when we start to see that 60 in bed, that's a sign of continued weakness, and we might be waiting for that daily to finally get oversold. Cause we haven't really... You know, the last time we got oversold on the daily was back here. It's rotating back down. Um, seems like it wants to hold it, but it actually is, you know, we're due for a pullback on the uh, daily. So I'm, I'm, I'm considering it, you know, that, that possibility. So we have to watch that a little bit closer. But the 60-minute time frame with the embedded stochastics is concerning also. Uh, but what today's move, you know, what are we going to blame today's move on? Is it just a uh, you know technical pullback here that's happening in the market, or was it Janet Yellen saying that stock valuations are too high, or getting high? Is the Fed sticking their t uh, their uh, their fingers back into the markets here, or was it something else out there? Um, is there you know is there more talk of Greece actually made a payment um, over the weekend or last night actually not the weekend anymore, and uh, they have another payment due I think next week next month sometime coming up 
I mean, that seems to be, uh, you know, going along, but there is chatter of that, uh, you know, always an issue out there, and that's always will be overhanging us. But, um, you know, let's talk about that five-minute. We start off tomorrow with a nice five-minute overbought level. And then we take a look at that 16. Yeah, we're oversold on this, but we haven't crossed back up, and it just doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel exactly like we want to bounce 100% tomorrow. I was thinking... At the end of the day, we're going to get a nice gap up, and let's just take a look at the futures right now. I mean, it's way early, but a lot of the earnings were out. Oh, actually, we're dropping off here. So I'm kind of considering, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more downside. I was uh, thinking about maybe a gap up on futures tomorrow. We'll watch it in the morning. And Taylor's interest, and I want to be in here earlier tomorrow to take that off pre-market. I considered taking it off today, but the spread's a little wide. I think we have a shot of getting up there early in the morning. Now, um, I just finished a video. I did a beautiful members video on the triple threat. The triple threat is something I've been keen in on. Um, we talked about, I talked about a little here. A little of, uh, I did talk about the triple threat after hours. And you can see we actually have one right now. So we actually have that nice candle, reversal candle. We have the triple stochastic setup. And it's, it's uh, 7.15 in the evening. Not something normally. I would take, but uh, let's pretend that we're taking it. Let's just bring the sim over here. Let's just take this, and uh, we just took it for a three tick. So I'm in it. Uh, what, why is my uh, why is it say I'm in at 74 and a quarter, and it's only at 73 here? What's going on here? Hmm. Let me refresh. Let me backfill this a little. Am I delayed here a little? No. Hmm. Why is this uh, a little different than I expected? All right, so 73. Something's, something's messed up here. I'm a little delayed on my DOM today. Anyway, we're going to let this thing roll. Um, normally, I would take a stop just to show you the triple threat setup here. Um, at this low here. That low is 207150. 207150. With 2071. Well, I don't know why my thing is all kooky up here. Did I lose? Um, Very strange. Anyway, uh, not to not to uh, dabble on that. I wanted to t give you some other stuff that we're working on. I'll move this over to the side so it's not distracting. Just a little little uh, little tester there, you know, just to kind of ca carry through from that video. So if you, you get done with this video and you remember, check out the triple threat video. You're gonna like it a lot. It's, it's a great video. So um, again, the five minute extended, um, the sixty minute embedded, and the daily pointing down. We throw that it coming out of the magic eight ball it tells us that we expect more downside. Um, and Taylor news. So we also want to go over a couple setups. The lane divergences have been key in this market. You know, absolutely key. We had a couple this week. We're going to go over those right now. We're going to get a couple other setups for this week also. I just realized what happened. <laughs> I, I opened up my platform before to check my Ann Taylor, you know, to see what uh, see what Ann Taylor was doing, and then I I figured it was still open. It's not open, so my my um, my bracket trader is not active because my my IB ch charts are not active. So I shut down my platform before. So this is not an act. I was wondering why is why is everything weird on this? It shouldn't be seventy four. I didn't take that anyway. Apologize for that. That was kind of a weird. Uh, I was trying to figure out why my. Uh, Dom wasn't working. Let's just pretend this was the level. You put a stop on the day, you look for three ticks, and that's that's the strategy for a triple threat. And that video is going to be released tonight. It's already done. I just have to, you know, edit it out a little and send it on its way into the forums. But uh, that's an example of it right there. So, um, so we're going to take a look at some of the other, the divergences. All right. So J, uh, T J Max. 
TJ Maxx here, Classic Divergence. You can see we on the Faster Stochastic, who actually a couple of the articles I have been reading, George Lane has been using the Faster um, Stochastics with this daily chart. Um, you know, normally the def default is 14, and we actually can see the default give us the, the, the divergence indicator, but the 7 or the 8 um, tends to uh, give it to you faster, and if it is, you know, it kind of clears it up for you a little. So you can actually see the lower low and the higher low here, and um, even though we call it divergence, it's, this is a convergence of two indicators. It's still the, the same signal here, and it still looks good, and uh, you know what? With Ann Taylor buyout tomorrow, I can only expect this to pop up a little. I can't. Own, I can only expect Macy's to pop a little. I can only expect uh, some other retail uh, stocks to pop tomorrow with the Ann Taylor. So we are in the Ann Taylor. We are in the, um, which is up here in the 40 range now, and we're in the TJ Maxx, which we're going to probably sell tomorrow too. Getting close to um, two dollars on that, whatever we have on that platform is on up now. Um, great setups overall. Great, great, great setups. Let me pull out my list of stocks here. <clears throat> Berkshire Hathaway, just to kind of remind you, that was a, a pretty decent setup. Um, I had to diverge, kind of a, well, we sold into that gap up, and I think it was a smart thing to do. We're out of it couple stocks we're starting to put on our watch list is uh, Brinker and Eat. Now, you might have an established channel like this, but, you know, you want to see that bounce off of But if it does fail for whatever reason, this channel still is active. And what we see the majority of the time, unless all hell breaks loose and the zombie apocalypse happens, happens that these quality names will push back into the channel a little bit higher than the lower trend line and then retrace back to the trend line and bounce. I mean, it's something that's so the farther we get from this line here, and it looks like we're pretty decent, it's a decent trade setting up right now on, on ETH and on Brinker. We, so we started concentrating on these. This one started to break down through it. Um, ETH also breaking down through it. I haven't checked Yum Brands. You see, Yum Brands was a sponsor of the Kentucky Derby. Yum Brands, we talked about the reversal setup here. It's a uh, reversal setup with a beautiful candle, slight divergence. And a pullback so you know I would still wait a, uh, wait a bit but I think any day now we're going to be setting up for a trade in DRI or EAT so let's uh, even EAT eat Brinker we get down into a 53 range I'm going to be taking that position probably tomorrow we're oversold on the daily uh, the 60 sometimes uh, we have the oversold uh, any type of gap down tomorrow any type of weakness into this um, start to take uh, I want to start to take some uh, shares all right, so hopefully we get that opportunity. Mark that down if you want to remind me tomorrow so we don't all work together as a team like we did on Apple today because we crushed Apple, and it's time to look back at our Apple trade. Um, you know, Apple, there's a lot of options traders on day trading radio, and I understand why. You know, I've always been an equities trader, futures trader. Um, I trade options the most basic way, as, as I would trade stocks, you know, short term. Uh, prefer weeklies, but monthlies to do as long as we're in that right, you know, price range. And you know, when we deal with all the uh, strategies of options, I don't, I don't deal with that as much. But I, I like to call the market the best high probability zone. So we can use options for that. And we did that today with Apple, and I want to show you how we did that. Um, All right, so let me bring the Apple chart over here. Sorry for the delay. So I'm going to just zoom out here. When I zoom out, we can see the after hours thing. So yesterday, we actually had this. We had this nice, tight, t very tight channel. And then the day showed up, and we pushed back off, and we dropped off. So right when we dropped off today, I, I recognized that we had a good pivot area up here and a good pivot area up here. We had a recognizable channel here, so this parallel trend line underneath was going to be the, the one we were paying attention to. So I wanted to take a trade off of that. Now, it looks like we kind of busted back down through that trend line. But like I said, 
Lots of times you get a quality name that breaks down to the lower part of a channel, a downward channel. You typically look for that break to the upside of a channel like this. Well, a lot of times you'll get an extension move down. Now, if you're concentrating on that lower trend line, you know you have a good stock. You let it push back. Odds are you're going to push back into it. It's a little flush. It happens every so often. Uh, it wasn't too much of a risk, you know, a big trade. It was just two calls. And I think the overall risk was about $420. And, um, you know, so it was, it was a decent setup here. So we pulled back a little bit further. I think we got in right around, you know, a little bit here, and then we pulled back. But then we started consolidating. And if we started to look at the bigger chart, it didn't look half bad. Um, you know, it didn't really pull back that much. It just pulled back a little. It looked a little steeper on the other one. But 124 down to 123.50, about 50 cents. And we had a nice reversal, and we popped around, kind of consolidated here, and then popped out of it, and we rallied. And we took profits, and then we pulled back. Um, and we took, why did we take profits? I think it was the five minute setup here that I took profits on. There's also a little trend line. I think it was probably around here. We pulled back and we got back in it again. And of course, we actually had a nice little wedge pattern. And now we're sitting pretty on this one again. And it's actually trading a little bit higher than this. So again, pull back to the trend line. We got in. Um, it pulled back closer to that lower trend line and a wedge pattern. We got back in and it popped out of this. And now we're looking at taking profits tomorrow morning on this. I'll give you a better example on this, but you had to be listening to the show. But, you know, it's just something we don't want to pay attention to uh, tomorrow. So that's, you know, you get something in here very close to in the money. I think there were 125 calls trading around $2 and change. Uh, and our second call, that, 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 or the third call we got here, is up about fifty bucks. So instead of you know, you know, owning a, th a thousand <laughs> or a hundred, two hundred shares of a uh, hundred dollar stock, you know, we're we're holding uh, an option or a contract that uh, you know it's just a fraction of that, that amount. Yet we get a nice return on our money. A nice return on the money. We only got about 25% on that one trade. And we have so many traders in the room here. Always banking 100%, 200%, 1,000% I've seen, you know, on some of the option trades. All right, so... Um, so I want to just take a look at a couple other stocks here and we'll let you on your way. But again, tomorrow we're still looking at this as a market radar video and, and it, it could um, get a little weaker tomorrow. I'm going to still concentrate on that 60-minute uh, that candle. And we want to see that 60-minute candle set up here. I want to pay attention to Eat Brinker. Um, DHR. Let's take a look at this one again. This was a recent HPS setup off the lower trend line. Seems to be holding up pretty good. I mean, we are holding that trend line. We're consolidating sideways a bit. You understand why we're in here? I mean, it makes sense. Just, uh, you know, quality name and a lower trend line. Things could break down a little bit more. Now, here we have Michael Kors. And I still say Michael Kors is similar to Ann's. Not that Ann is going to get the, uh, you know, Ann's getting the buyout and stuff. I don't know if that's... <laughs> going to re relate to Michael Kors' uh, pattern here. But you can see, the you know, we're really fighting to hold off the lows, even though the market has been grinding here on Kors. You take the bigger picture of Kors, it's a huge channel, a nice pullback. Um, nothing exciting happening, though. You know, no big announcements or anything in the company. You know, you don't want to get a downgrade or something that kind of breaks us down here. We're still kind of, but we are seeing signs of that internal momentum shift. We're starting to see this starting to move back up here. The market seems to be at the lows, but we're starting to feel better. Um, so Michael Kors here still in play. And you know, people ask me, it, you know, it kind of got beat up the last couple of days. Everything got beat up the last couple of days. Well, not everything, but, you know, you know, you got the market here. We understand that this is going to flag out. And we're going to move higher here. The problem is if you're in the options, I think stocks will be fine with fast little options. You have to be a little bit more concerned with de time decay, but we're going to move up out of this. I want to consider this a flag. And uh, we're going to hold these levels, and we're going to break out of this and move up here um, on fast enough. So I'm not that concerned with it. I'd, I'd rather see it move up today 
You know, I'd rather see it move up tomorrow. I would rather not deal with the crap of pullbacks. Let's just get to the point we need to get to. Well, that's where we are. You know, we have to deal with it. But that's, uh, you know, Juniper Networks, we talked about this pullback. You know, you get a nice move, you pull back. You got to take advantage. It's going to pop again. It's going to pull back. You got to continue to take advantage of these pullbacks. <clears throat> NEV. Again, you know, sideways consolidation starting to roll over a bit. A little bit more concerning with the rollover, but um, and the hourly, right on the right on the uh, support level here, just kind of right down here. Might even be down a little bit below it, but again, a lot of these things here pointed out to a pop higher would be a big reversal candle. Those things are hard to come by because when you see it, it usually happens after the market is flushed down enough where you you know. You have white knuckles, and at, at that point, you're capitulated, and the next thing you know, you're leaving this big candle, and the next thing you know, you're heading back up. So Now, there's a quite a, a few stocks out there that looked pretty good today. Um, I mean, uh, Clorox here closed on the highs, looked pretty good. I mean, it's a nice pullback. It's oversold on the daily. Um, oversold on, well, push, starting to push back up on the 60, but I would wait for a divergence on this. Here's waste management. Waste management here really did get hit pretty hard. We got embedded down here. It, it did uh, pull back pretty hard. We didn't have a tremendous reversal today, but uh, man, this is a tough one. I picked up some shares here in the 52 range, and it, it dropped off pretty hard. Um, it was earnings I held into by mistake, and and from that point we consolidated, and, but then dropped off a little bit more with this market pullback. But I think tomorrow's our day. I think I'm going to try to repair this a little, bring down my cost average, picking up another 100 shares. But I like it anywhere under the 200. Um, but, yeah, surprised to see a pullback in this, uh, a, a steep pullback like this. This has been a pretty steep pullback. So that's actually a good, a good thing for people who are not in this. It's actually a really good level if you're not in this one. Um, a good risk reward le level here too. I mean, you have a lot of uh, a lot of energy taken out of this stock. It's due to uh, get a little bounce, at least up to that 50 level, 200 period moving average. Um, not seeing any big trends, uh, trend lines. Just a almost a gap down. One, two, three, four, five, six, going into its seventh day. Yeah, I think a lot of things here. If we had even had a little lower low, I'd I'd repair that tra trade and actually. Uh, get on get on board again a little, little more just take a look at Scripps network here we've in this trade and um, we got a good trade out we got near a dollar on it we got out of it and I just want to show you that 60 minute time frame which was interesting we got overboard on the 60 and this thing all started we got we got into this trade off of a divergence this was actually a great 60 minute divergence and whenever I see one I want to point it out to you so you kind of get the uh, get the feel of what one looks like when you see it and this is a real clear one pushed back up above the 20 pulled back but didn't really pull back as we made new lows we stayed way above that 20 red line and we pushed higher off of this so a great one um, divergence there and you can see that we've you know got overbought once pulled back got overbought second time pulled back now oversold it's not a trade setup but this was you know this is the, this is the area you have to look back and remember all right, we've been waiting for Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks, uh, PANW. There's a small trend line here. It goes out to February, um, then goes through the uh, March, and it's a pretty decent candle. I'd count that, and we actually just tagged it right here. Now, it's not to the 50 period moving average. We haven't made a full rotation on the stochastic since I don't know how long. Uh, it's just been a, a fantastic stock. So it's almost like a, um, you know, trying to pick your spot here. We did pull back a little. Um, it's, it's looking better and better, but I, ref I just haven't gotten into it yet. It's just something I am kind of contemplating, 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 excuse me. It's been a long day. Um, so I'm going to watch it again tomorrow. Maybe we'll see some relative strength or something that kind of convinces us, convinces me of, uh, taking that position again. But, uh, right now holding 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 steady here with that not in it uh same thing with ge here seeing a, a decent pullback on this there's a big underlying trend line back down to 25 it did not expect to get a pullback anywhere close to 26 so tomorrow should be a pivotal day on this um 
you know, it actually did pull back, hold that 20, which closed basically right on the 20 period moving average. Again, this would be great if this market bounces tomorrow. It's going to correct all these stocks. These stocks are going to look fantastic again, uh, giving you some opportunities. But um, again, waste management definitely. One look at that closer tomorrow. And I think that's going to wind us down. I think the most important thing was that uh, triple threat video here because I am actively uh, trading the futures during the during the day. And I uh, encourage any other traders in there in the uh, chat room, please post your trades. It's, it helps everyone. We're all working as a team. We could, uh, you know, and here, here's our triple threat set up here. I would say that triple threat is pretty, pretty good here. You know, even in a market like this, we get a triple threat where everything lines up with that reversal candle. And look at that. We're pushing back up here, 74. I mean, you, ha you have your three ticks there. Uh, I think you had that three tick there, no problem. You probably got in a little bit under 73, if if anything. You're at 74. That's a that's a good trade right there. And it's actually telling us something else. It's actually saying, hey, look at me. I just rotated all the way back. I didn't make new lows. We're still holding up pretty good. I'm starting to see a little strength in this uh, overnight trade. But again, it's an overnight trade. I wish I had all the time in the world, but I don't, you know. Maybe the next one we'll take. You know, if I'm doing a Wednesday show, I'd like to take one. I would like to get a, a an overnight show going for someone who uh, might be in a uh, you know a foreign land who could uh, handle overnight hours. Get in touch with me. I would definitely consider a uh, overnight uh, show. So, all right, um, that's it. We're going to see you in the markets tomorrow. We're going to take Ann Taylor off. A nice trade. We're going to get back. We'll probably end up taking Apple off on a gap up if we could get that out of that Apple. Um, a lot of new setups are going to set up, and just keep an eye on it. Uh, the trade alert box is where it's all going to happen. We have some new HPS setups this week. Those are uh, working out pretty good. And for those out there not members of Day Trading Radio, definitely consider trying out the uh, the free trial. We get a two week free trial. We have some great setups here. Great, um, you know, of course, commercial free chat rooms. Great traders in it. Um, everything that goes along with the site. All right, so that's it. Um, Fastball cores, Dunkin' Donuts. So I'm curious on a couple of things here. WPC. I'm curious about one here. Give you a look at one of these. HPS setups. It's it's setting up. I want to take this trade, um, and we're very close to it. So as you're a, when when you're a member of Day Trading Radio, you'll actually get a, a watch list which has all the charts um, uh, detailed for you with their buy zone, stops, profit zones, and uh, the video goes along with explaining what type of setup it is. So you can learn from that also, and the setups are embedded into the platform. So when these levels, this this uh, price actually hits this level. You'll get an automatic alert. You'll get an automatic email. So you don't even have to be in front of the markets to actually see it great. So you know, like, oh, John has that WP carry trade. It looks great. I would love to get into it. And you're driving around getting pampers, and all of a sudden you get that email saying, hey, you know what? It's in, entering your buy zone. So you can act, take action on it. And uh, great little system. You get to all that and so much more here at Day Trading Radio. And uh, we'll see you in uh, see you in the chat room. All right, take care.